Thank you. Program director, our beloved sister, Mrs. Tutu Skweia, former President Tabo Mbeki, Nosis Zanel Mbeki. Program director, allow me to dispense with going through other salutations as we have run out of time. An ambassador of goodwill, a servant of his people, and a courageous son of our soil has departed. When many of us received the news of the passing of Uput Zola, Skweia, we had nothing to say but to console ourselves with the knowledge that he had served his people well and had played his role in the struggle for freedom. A number of us are still encountering the difficulty to find the appropriate words with which to express our sorrow, which is so deep. For Uput Zola was precious to many of us, and his death is just simply devastating to contemplate. When we recall the consummate compassion, the grace, the humanity and intellect and humility of Zola's Kweia, we are reminded of the immeasurable capacity of human beings for goodness. In a world that is riven by conflict and greed, we were comforted to have living amongst us a person like Zola's Kweia, his most lasting impact, possibly to all of us, was just being who he was. We were heartened by his moral clarity and by his steadfast commitment to democracy, justice, and peace. Here was a noble man Noble not in the sense of nobility, but noble in the sense of nobleness. Who would never dare sell the birthright of his people. A man who would choose death rather than betray the trust of his people. Integrity was the defining and determining force and the guiding light of his entire existence. It originated in the long-standing tradition of his upbringing and development in the African National Congress. It inspired all his actions and determined all his decisions. Whether he was a lawyer, a constitution maker, a freedom fighter, a soldier, a minister or diplomat or a distinguished elder in the ANC, his love of his movement, as we have heard even his last words as expressed by you, Chairperson, and his love for his people was foremost in his mind. There was an innate nobleness in his demeanor and also in his will to action. There was no act of his that did not have the imprint of his character. Whether he was sitting in the National Executive Committee of his movement, the African National Congress, or high positions of state, that nobleness transcended his action and gave a characteristic tone to his way of doing things, which, which was just simply doing it only the way Zola's Kweia could do it. Here was a man who shared the desire of a billion people for an Africa resurrected and free. 
Here was a man who shared the dream of the dispossessed, the marginalized, and yes, the suffering. Though he has departed, we will continue to draw strength and inspiration from his example. In the memory of his work, our own will be filled with his light, and from his example shall rise new shoots of lessons for us who remain behind. As we fold the flag that now covers him, we will commend his spirit to the founding fathers and mothers of our movement and hand over the work that he has done to future generations as a symbol of honor to his service and love for his country. Since Zola Square has passed away, there have been many people who have shared their experiences, their memories, and indeed their grief. And many South Africans have done so in many ways. At the memorial service held earlier this week, friends and comrades who grew up with him spoke fondly of his deep care for the downtrodden and vulnerable. They shared their memories of a revolutionary and disciplined cadre of the ANC who valued the unity of his people and cherished the ideal of an egalitarian society. Those who were fortunate enough to work with him in exile and in government reminded us of Zola Square's work ethic, his cordiality and passion, and passion and the way he continued to develop people, the people who worked with him. They described him as an architect of a democratic, efficient, and inclusive public service that was built from the ruins of a fragmented, divisive, and decadent administration. Yes, Professor Sten Sangwen, I like you too. <laughs> You may or may not know that I have an appointment with you, and it is going to happen very soon. And I'm going to remind you to say exactly everything you were saying here to me as well. Those who worked with Uputzola recall the superb mind that formed many of the founding constructs of our constitution. On behalf of all South Africans, we extend our profound sympathies to both the Squeia and the Mazibuko families on so great a loss. We will miss this gentle giant. We will miss his caring hand as we continue to draw guidance from the collective wisdom of our stalwarts to renew our country and revitalize our organization. As he would have wished, we will intensify our struggle for the complete restoration of the dignity of our people. We will intensify our struggle to return the land to the people and build an inclusive economy that benefits all South Africans. As he often reminded us, the aim of the national liberation struggle is the democratization of our country and the redistribution of its wealth. It is a struggle to eradicate the privileges of the few and to entrench human rights as the basis of our democratic dispensation. In paying tribute to his old friend, Albi Sachs recently described Zola Square 
as a natural Democrat. He credits the outstanding leadership of Zola Square in bringing to life our constitution. Alongside people of the caliber of Jack Simons, Kara Asmal, Bridget Mabanda, and Arthur Chaskelson, he forged a constitutional legacy that will define our country for generations to come. I was privileged myself to be one of those who benefited a great deal from his knowledge about the genesis of the ANC's constitutional guidelines that helped to shape our constitution today. In all tasks that he was given, he made a difference. When former President Nelson Mandela entrusted Zola Square with the formidable challenge of transforming the oppressive apartheid machinery into a developmental state that would serve all South Africans, he undertook this task with commitment, with responsibility, and with purpose. He said, public services are not a privilege in a civilized and democratic society. They are a legitimate expectation. And through that, he then became the father of our Batupili ethos. In his view, the tests for a transformed efficient public service lay in the practical difference people see in their lives, not in slogans. His was a struggle for a better, efficient, and compassionate public service. It is a tribute to Zola Square's vision that we today have a public service of more than a million people who dedicate themselves to building a better life for all our people. And yes, they can do much more than what they are doing. It is a public service that reflects the diversity of our nation. It is our responsibility to ensure that the public service retains the character that Zola Square envisioned and embraces the values that he espoused. In all that we do, we must answer the simple question that he asked of us time and time again. Are we putting our people first? Are we putting our people first? It was a question that continued to occupy him during his tenure as the Minister of Social Development as well. He was the architect of our progressive social assistance program, which has been responsible for sustainably pushing back the frontiers of poverty that continues to grip so many of our countrymen and women children included. For him, this task was much more than a transformative policy intervention. It was a passion, it was a mission, a sacred responsibility. He was deeply shocked by the conditions under which so many of our people lived and was determined that the democratic state should mobilize all resources at its disposal to lift our people out of the agony of poverty. He did indeed travel through the length and the breadth of our country to ensure that all grant recipients received what was due to them. He relentlessly championed the child support grant, which had a significant measurable impact on the health and well-being and prospects of an entire generation of young people. Thanks to his work, more children have survived, more children have thrived, and more children have been able to attend school. He achieved all this without fanfare and without spectacle. He did it quietly, 
methodically and with determination. He embodied and cherished the values of consultation, consensus, consensus making, trust building and cooperation. In negotiations, he was firm of persuasion and principle, with the acumen and strategic craft to know when, how, and why to accommodate the demands of an apartheid state that was negotiating its way. It is deeply that in the twilight of his life, this gallant member of the Lutuli detachment was, by his own account, stopped at the doors of Lutuli House when he wanted to meet the leadership. Such was the pain and disappointment of this cadre who gave his life to our organization that he said, here I am and I don't even know where the ANC is. As President of the Republic and the African National Congress, I wish to join Deputy President David Mabuza in saying we regret this shameful departure from the principles, the values, and the ways of our movement. I feel that we did disappoint him. Comrade Zola was one of those rare people you never wanted to disappoint, not because he was judgmental. He, in fact, was infinitely patient and forgiving of people's foibles. And he used that patient of his to make you feel like, yay, he understands when you make mistakes. But this time around, I think we made a big mistake and disappointed him deeply. To this departed warrior of Umkontwe Sizwe, his family and to our stalwarts, please accept our sincere apology for the distress that we may have caused him. Today we make a solemn commitment that never again will we disown, dishonor those who have dedicated their lives to the movement and to the cause of our people. We can be certain that Zola's Kweia would have been concerned about the violent protests that have seized the Northwest in the last few days, as we heard from Oputsten. Like the violence that he confronted in the early 90s, such violence can only serve the interests of those opposed to transformation and the progress of our people. In the memory of our distinguished stalwart, we need to unite and resist those who wish to delay our march to bettering the life of our people and to render the best service to our people because that is what Budzola would have wanted to see. To throw away the rule of law and disregard the Constitution because our differences fall into the trap of enemies of change is not the way to go. As leaders, let us follow the example that Upozola showed us by ensuring that, yes, indeed, we, did, we do give due care to the interests of our people. Like Zola's Kweia, we must listen to our people. We must put our people first. And so we bid farewell to one of the best amongst us. We bid farewell to a gentle soul and a formidable freedom fighter whose remarkable legacy will endure long after all of us are gone. Vuyo, much as you said, yes, we've been talking about this wonderful gentle soul. 
You say that at home he was something else. But Osis Tutu, sitting right next to me here, said, yes, he may have been seen like that, but in the bedroom he was very sweet. I don't know why we are all laughing. <laughs> we say goodbye to a righteous man, one who used his abundant abilities for the sake of others to accomplish his organization's objectives as best as he understood the objectives of the African National Congress. Siti Lala Ngotolo Mkonte Wesizwe. Oliver Tambo Sikela Ubambe Isandla Sa Gazola Skweia as he comes to meet you all, Nelson Mandela and many others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.